Let's get to Andre Taylor, who uh, has been a very outspoken leader since the start. Andre, you got me this morning? Yes. What are your thoughts here? Good morning. Looking at this uh, unfold here on your screen as they clear out the chop. You know, a lot of times you want to be right about a lot of things. I wanted to be wrong about this particular situation with the chop. I really wanted to be wrong. I really wanted them to ascend above a place. And as I've been explaining to many of them for now a couple of weeks, that chop should never be considered a place but an idea. And to see what's going on now is a manifestation of some of the conversations that I have had with a lot of their quote unquote leadership, you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's devastating to see that, you know, this missed opportunity will only be known as a place of where death uh, occurred, where two people died. Um, I haven't gotten a, an update on the, the, uh, the 14 year old was, was this yeah. Yeah, I can, I can, I can hear itself. it. I can hear it in your voice, Andre. I, I just have to ask though. So this didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. I'm curious, when did that happen? What, what, what should have happened or what did happen to erase that message and send this into a, a, a negative direction? Well, the first time that there was violence there, there should have been a, an awakening and a, and, a, and a murder around there. There should have been an awakening and that awakening should have, should have focused on those, those deaths as well as, well as George uh, Floyd's uh, untimely death. I think that if they would have pivoted to those deaths as strongly um, as the George Floyd death, I think that Seattle would have continued to support this group. But um, for there to be continual shootings and death consistently, uh, we just couldn't allow, you know, this space to continue. It, it was just, listen, it, was, it, it didn't end how it started. Yeah. And that's the tragedy of the situation. And, and don't you agree? Don't you agree that th th there's a better way, right? I mean, the, the Black Lives Matter movement obviously has a very clear message. It's obviously very important. It obviously should continue. But blocking off city streets, there's got to be a better way. And I'm curious your thoughts about what that should be and perhaps what the mayor and police chief are telling you they want to do now moving forward. Well... Of course, there is a better way, but you know, I don't. What I don't want to do is discourage young folks uh, from having a voice, but to try to learn from this experience and you know how to navigate a little bit better when you're dealing with systems and the like. Um, my organization, not this time, showed that better way by leading Washington State and becoming the first and only state with a police accountability law. Um, we did the very opposite of allowing any violence around us. We made sure it didn't happen. And that was a part of the messaging as we were moving forward. So a better way, we not only showed a better way, but we showed the results of a better way. And um, that was some of the conversations that I was trying to have with, with him at shop. What I did not know uh, as, of, as, of, as of late is that a lot of the people that were at, were at shop were not from our city. They were coming in from Chicago, from Georgia, uh, from New York, from Portland, and I did not know that. And so, of course, you would they wouldn't understand the work that has been been done here in in, uh, in our city and state. They were oblivious when I was talking to them about some of the things that they could do, and I've given them examples of those things through you know our own uh, organization as we have moved forward. And they were oblivious, and so I was wondering well, how, how how can these people not understand this, know yeah. this? until I realized they, a lot of them weren't from Seattle. Right. Uh, Andre, real quick, I believe Michelle has a question for you. Sure. Well, I, I have a couple of questions, but since you just mentioned that people were coming in um, from outside of Seattle to join CHOP, what about some of the accusations that right-wing um, extremists were a part of, you know, causing trouble in CHOP? You know, what do we know about who was leading the organized efforts in CHOP? Did the message, obviously you said, you know, um, the message may have been lost, but were we seeing, what were we seeing inside CHOP? Were we seeing just people coming in from out of town or people coming in to start trouble? Were, was there gang activity? There are all kinds of things being said right now. What do you know about that? Well, well, you know, I can't 
describe this speech for Chop within itself because I wasn't in the inside of Chop. I just only know what I know just by being down there the, the, uh, the few times that I was down there and the people reporting to me uh, and then seeing the actions of some of the people that did not recognize some of the work that has been going on, on here in Seattle and Washington State. But as far as understanding what was going on in the inside mechanisms of the workings of Trump, I have no idea absolutely. Yeah. I don't want to sit here and feel like I'm spoke speaking for Trump. I'm sure they'll be able to have a lot of things to say after the day. But, uh, yeah, I wasn't speaking for Trump, so I couldn't answer those questions for you. Yeah. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I also am just wondering, how do, how does the community move forward? How do we move forward if people have been working and doing the work here in Seattle? How, how does everyone come together and move forward? If the, is, you know, if the conversation is still about dismantling police, how does that move forward, especially now uh, that protesters have said, we won't leave until we, our demands are met? Well, now they've they've gone. So, what do you think the con how do you think the conversation needs to move forward? Well, I, I am a, I am in agreement with a reallocation of funds. I mean, I think that's a consistency throughout the country. Yes. Um, I don't I don't um, think that everyone was a part or even supporting the vision of stop. There were some, but there's a lot of people in our city. Seattleites are extremely resilient. We'll move on and continue to do great work here you know, in Seattle and Washington State. But, um, you know, there's a lot of work already happening here. We didn't just start with CHOP. Our work has been an ongoing process. There's many community organizations that are doing excellent work in all communities here. And so we will continue doing that work and continuing trying to partner together and that work that's already been going here, going on here in Seattle, Washington. As I said, Seattle lights are extremely resilient. Uh, we will gather ourselves. We will we will reflect on what has happened here, on how we could support things like this, and what we will not support ever again. So we're not going to support violence. That's what that's what I know, and I think that is something that we that could be agreed upon on every community here in Seattle and throughout this state. But we, don't, we want to support free speech of these youngsters and the, eyes, the fresh ideas that they have. I thought they were extraordinarily brilliant in some of that. So I just don't want to speak all negativity about, uh, 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 about some of the things that have transpired with CHOP. Mm -hmm. It's just that when, you mix, when violence is mixed with anything that you do, it, be, it becomes a different situation. Yeah, no, that's, that is definitely and for Andre, sure. And Andre, I don't want this to get lost in the message this morning, but... Certainly, you know, you've been working and putting in the work because your brother lost his life. How are you continuing to honor his life today? The message, the uh, motto of my organization, not this time, is called Do the Work. So we will continue to do the work. You know, if I, is by honoring my brother and the other 14 families that we represent that have lost someone due to police violence, we will do the work. I'm a part of the governor's task force, so I will continue to try to help in that process. Build upon 940, we're at the end of the implementation process of 940, and people will, be, will begin to see and realize uh, what 940 really is able to do, you know. Uh, and I'm excited to see that, trans, that transpire. Okay. Well, uh, we appreciate your work, and now that you're on the task force, we will be asking you how that's going and checking in with you as well. Absolutely. I appreciate you this morning. Thank you. All right. That's Andre Taylor. He is one of the lead organizers of Not This Time and a very outspoken organizer of some of the early protests.